jungles of Southeast Asia, on the border between Myanmar and Thailand, a young man races through the forest in a attempt to save the most precious thing in his life. There was blood everywhere. The part of her leg that was hit was ripped in pieces. I didn't know what to do. The elephant is named Motola and her foot has just been shattered by a landmine. She was hauling timber deep in the forest when she stepped on the mine. A deadly reminder of the guerrilla warfare that plagues this area. Kun Vinai is her mahout, the person responsible for her care and well-being. <laughs> When she had got up, I forced her to start walking so that she could get to the Thai side of the border. It's about six miles to the border. Motala is seriously injured and in great pain. She may not make it, but Vinai knows it's her only real chance for survival. days and nights to reach the river that forms the border between Thailand and Myanmar. I thought she wouldn't survive. I knew if she couldn't cross the river, she wouldn't have a chance. Motola will need convincing to cross. To Vinay's relief, people from his village arrive with their own elephants to help. Dinai chains Motala, their elephant. He walks her gently across the river. Two more elephants flank her on either side. Uh -huh. But then, in midstream, Motala stops, apparently unable to go on. Vinay just can't get her to move. Finally, after much coaxing and prodding, Motala hobbles out of the water and into Thailand. That she made this is incredible, as author and elephant expert Richard Lair knows. I don't think very many elephants would have survived Modala's trek. The fact is that she was owned by a family that loved her and took very good care of her. So she was very robust, very healthy. And beyond that, she really is a truly exceptional elephant. Elephants are revered in Thai culture. They're also very valuable. Each of these beautiful creatures would have cost their owners around $5,000. These elephants are lining up for injection at one of Thailand's mobile elephant clinics. These elephants are basically all healthy and very good condition. <laughs> The reason they're in such good condition is know, that they're all uh, owned by families, ridden by sons, nephews, and consequently they're, they're much loved and well taken care of. But many elephants in this part of the world are used in illegal logging operations, often across the border in Myanmar, where life for an elephant can be dangerous. Much of the area where Thailand borders Myanmar, 
which used to be called Burma, is heavily forested. But on the Thai side, the destruction of so many trees forced the government to ban logging. Helicopter and ground patrols have the difficult job of tracking down illegal loggers. Secret filming reveals dozens of elephants working night and day. To make them work longer and harder, many are given amphetamines. The drugs damage their livers, and many elephants become addicted. The problem with illegal logging is that in the old days, logging was very orderly because the elephants were very valuable. You want your elephant to be able to work for 20 or 30 years, 40 years even, before you retired it. The elephant was always rested, well taken care of. Illegal logging, you log in the middle of the night. The Mahout doesn't own his own elephant, and nobody loves an elephant that belongs to somebody else. Motola has crossed the river, but she's still not home free. She was feeling much as any human being would have been. She was in great pain to the point of being delirious, very little sense of what was going on around her. I mean, really a pathetic case. Motala is in terrible pain. Vinai sends his cousin, Zam Vang, to a local pharmacy. If Motala is going to make it, she must have some for the pain. The best they can do is a local anesthetic, usually reserved for people. But it may be enough to get Motala back on her feet. They make it at last to a road. If Sam Vaughn can get back in time with a truck, Motala may yet survive this ordeal. Vina is determined to get her to a very special hospital near the town of Lam Pong. That if Motila could be treated by the Lampang Hospital, they would save her life. It was such a long wait by the side of the road before the truck arrived. But when the truck finally arrives, Motala is terrified. She backs away. I had to sit on Motala's head to force her into the truck, but she didn't want to go. Lots of people had to help, and it took a very long time. It takes an hour to get her on the truck, and the ride to Long Pong will take seven hours. They are headed to a place unlike any other a remarkable hospital run by a remarkable woman. So Rita Salvala was inspired to help elephants as an eight-year-old girl. She saw an elephant, Uncle Elephant she called him, lying by the road, badly injured, but still alive. and me, as a young girl and who had been sick all my life, when one, when one is sick, we have to go to the hospital. So I asked my, my father, Papa, then we, we should rush Uncle Elephant to the hospital. But he said there was no place, and we couldn't, couldn't do anything, he was too big. My father said one thing, 
that uncle would be in heaven because we heard a gunshot. Working with Richard Lair and Dr. Preacher Pong Kham, a veterinarian, Sarida opened the elephant hospital in 1994. She has helped many elephants since then, but Motala is special. She has been very courageous. Without her willingness to, to survive, she wouldn't have crossed the distance of 10 kilometers across the river um, to Thailand, back to Thailand, to be able to have the treatment. When I saw her the first day, I knew that Motala didn't want to die. Other patients include his mother and calf. Ill treatment caused the mother, Awan, to become mentally disturbed. She killed her first calf, and Sarada was afraid she would do the same with her next calf, Pupa, and took Awan in. Awan did the same thing. She threw Pupa up in, in the air, stepped on her, but because Pupa was quite big, uh, about 100 kilograms, uh, we managed within 20 minutes to drag him out and introduced him back to Uan later, and now they are very, very sweet together. Motola's case will take a lot more work. The first order of business is x-rays. Every paper and television station in Thailand is following her story. The x-rays are grim. The mine destroyed at least 20 bones in Motala's foot. It cannot be reconstructed. Instead, the doctors will amputate her foot so that the infection doesn't spread. They will set to work near the carpo-metacarpal joint, a kind of ankle just above those dangling metacarpal bones. It will be an unprecedented undertaking. It's 10 days since Motola reached the hospital. Time to go under the knife. A special cradle has been made for. Life support machines and surgical equipment are wheeled to Motola's shed. Even soldiers pitch in. First, Motala is placed in a specially constructed net and hoisted by a hydraulic crane. Suddenly, one of the hoists slips. Vinay and Samvang are desperate to free her trunk. Motala requires 70 times more anesthetic than a human to put her to sleep. We asked everyone to come and help. Everyone is doing their best. Me too, and Motala as well. Oxygen is sent through her trunk. The 30-member medical team includes surgeons, orthopedists, and 12 nurses. The operation takes three and a half hours. All Thailand is watching. I want her to leave. Because she knows that everyone is, is praying for her. Slowly, Motala regains consciousness. The medical team then decides to attempt something that has never been done before, that will make Motala's name famous around the world. They'll make her a prosthesis, an artificial foot. The bomb shock Dumbo Motala is gradually recovering from its lengthy surgery flocked to visit the pachyderm, but were barred from getting too close as not to disturb her. The donation so far has almost reached 5 million baht. High authorities have contacted an elephant specialist for the Dumbo's shoe, which is to be fitted when her wound dries up. 
Plastic yogurt containers can be melted down to make artificial limbs. Hundreds of Thais send their empties to Dr. Turchai Chiwaget. There's some send me by post, some just bring it here. This hospital in Chiang Mai in northern Thailand has workshops which make over a thousand artificial limbs every year, many for victims of motorbike accidents. Dr. Turch is making a new leg for a man who lost his right leg in a machine accident. The whole process can be completed in a day. Motila's new foot will be made exactly the same way. Dr. Turdchai made a trial mold from Motila's leg while she was asleep, into which he poured 60 pounds of plaster of Paris to replicate the stump. In the sole of the new cap will be a cushion made from a specially durable plastic to prevent painful rubbing. It can take the weight of the elephant when she walks. You know, uh, it should be able to take the weight of at least one ton, or maybe about two thousand pounds. Back at the elephant hospital, Vinay has settled in with the other mahouts. He gets up at 6.30 every day for a breakfast of fish, rice, and vegetables before a day spent caring for Motila. My job is to be Motila's mahout. She likes to be close to me, her own mahout, and likes me to look after her. I feel sorry for her. When she is in pain, she twitches. There are nerves inside, and when the nerves are touched, she flinches in pain. I have to tell the vet to be careful. A good mahout will bond with his elephant. A good mahout will sacrifice his own comfort and safety to protect the elephant. And the elephant will respond to that and often return in kind. Uh, sometimes the bond seems to be closer than between husband and wife, if only because they spend much more time together. Dr. Turchai is asked to make a temporary brace for the damaged leg. The idea is to take the weight off the other front leg, which is showing signs of strain. About 60% of an elephant's weight is carried on its front legs. That means Motila's good leg is carrying nearly two tons. Everyone hopes she will use the crutch. This is what we call the walking brace. We made this for her in order that she can put some weight on the left leg because uh, she starts to have trouble on her right leg. But Motila is reluctant to bear down on her new peg leg. In the end, it's discarded. Some people question putting so much effort into saving one elephant's life. For others, though, there's little doubt that elephants are special creatures. at them and, and you know you recognize their beauty their magnificence their nobility and the reason is in the heart it's not in the brain how can you look at them and, and not want to help six weeks after the operation Motila is allowed out of her shed. The wound is healing, but she seems listless and depressed. She is not that lively anymore. Maybe because she's tired. Uh, 
the looks in Mutala's eyes made me very, very scared. I don't know why, maybe because under stress or maybe she's in great pain, maybe there might be some infection now. I believe she wants to say she's in pain. But Moto fights on. Four months go by, and her wound is nearly healed. She can now walk to a nearby clearing. Every day, she makes the painful journey. Vinai is worried that Motola is now tiring easily, and the infection in her right leg is getting worse. Dr. Precha is Thailand's leading elephant doctor. For the first time, he's thinking the unthinkable. If Motala is in such pain, should they be keeping her alive at all? Because we want to check the smelling of this wound to show us that it's serious or not. Are they keeping her alive partly because of guilt? A guilt that, in a sense, we all share, knowing that her injuries were caused by human beings. Somebody asked the question, why we not kill her? But, yes, we know that when the time coming, we must make decision to live in and to die, which way is better. We try to give her a chance to live in, to kill very easy. I can kill her suddenly, five minutes, she dies. But maybe I feel like a guilty or sin because why not we why not we allow her to to choose? Why don't you close your eyes? You're crying. Don't cry. What's the matter, my child? I feel she is um restless and even sometimes like hopeless and I'm I'm trying to to will her to leave that's why every time she cries I once I, I tell her please don't cry because you've got to fight <laughs> that every time I watch her I I have the feelings it's like urging her Please, get up, please. Don't just lie there. I fear that if one day she cannot stand, if she cannot use her right leg any, any longer, she couldn't support her leg, to stand up or to lie down, and that's it. Because um, the chance of survival to my eyes has been very slim since day one. So if she doesn't survive, we shouldn't be sorry. We have done our best. You can see from the looks in her eyes when she looks at me, she's pleading for something. I can't tell. Only Mutala can tell us. I have to discuss this over with the vets, and it's their judgment. So if they decide, then I have to make final decision myself. Everybody's rooting for her. Everybody wants her to live, and that if anything should happen to be to her, that it would be, you know, I mean, basically a national tragedy. Motala has suffered so much and shown such courage that the people caring for this brave animal can only continue to hope.
that she will one day walk again without pain.